Breaking news in the NFL. The Cardinals have lost DeAndre Hopkins for the rest of the regular season. They do hope that he's going to be able to return for the postseason. There are four weeks to go. This is the play he got hurt on. Our Jason Locke and Fora reporting that the Cardinals expect him to miss the final four games of the regular season, but they are hopeful that he can be back for the playoff run. The Cardinals right now tied for the top spot in the NFC, but they would lose the tiebreaker right now to the Packers and the Bucks. So they're in the three position, an opportunity to clinch a playoff berth this week with a win and or uh, some other stuff happening. The Cardinals are going to be in, but since that 7-0 start, just 3-3 three and three and wobbling just a little bit, and they won't have DeAndre Hopkins the rest of this regular season with a sprained knee. Let's get to our NFL insider Pete Prisco in here. Pete, your reaction to the news that they won't have Hopkins the rest of this regular season push? Well, they kind of haven't had him for a while anyways. I mean, the last time he was a legitimate factor in their passing game was week seven. I, I think he had seven catches that game, and you know he's fought through some injuries all year. And he hasn't been the same guy. And you could clearly see that even though he he tweaked the knee again. So I I think when you look at this, um, look, name, again, better probably than game right now. And and that's not to, you know, say he's not a good player. It's just that he's been so banged up. He just hasn't been the same player this year. uh, And age is starting to become a factor. So now what do you do? Well, that's why he signed A.J. Green. And A.J. Green, another older receiver, has looked pretty good. He looked good the other day against the Rams. I thought he would look good against the Rams. Uh, and this is the role he has to step into. You have a bunch of other guys. I mean, Christian Kirk's a good player, and you drafted Rondell Moore, and you got to get more creative. I mean, you got to get him involved in the passing game a little bit more than what they do right now. So I think the Cardinals and Cliff Kingsbury can handle this. Uh, it's not like they're losing a guy who's been catching 10 balls a game for 120 yards and two touchdowns. He hasn't been as productive this season because of injuries like they expected him to be. But at the same time, you look at those touchdown numbers, and he has the same number of touchdowns as Kirk, Green, and Moore combined. Eight and eight. So what are they losing in DeAndre Hopkins when he is healthy? You mentioned that he hasn't been healthy for much of this season. He missed all of November with a hamstring injury. Yeah, but Chris, he has one of those, one touchdown since week seven. One. I mean, that's a long time ago. And so I, I do think you got to look at this and say, I get it. Uh, he's a produ- When he's healthy, he's still a productive receiver uh, in the league, and he's a big body target you can throw the ball to, and, and he can go up and make plays on the ball in the 50-50 balls. That's not what Christian Kirk does. That's not what Rondell Moore does. So that's going to challenge them to get more creative in how they use them. And I, I think Rondell Moore is under underutilized in their offense. You know, they use him on some jet sweeps. They get the ball out to him. They run him a little bit. But let him catch the ball down the field. He's a, he's a speedy guy, uh, and I think you're going to have to rely on him a little bit more. You don't get the big body, but that's what A.J. Green's there for. Uh, you have two big bodies when you have Hopkins and, uh, and A.J. Green, but now you don't have the big body on the other side, so you got to get creative. You also have a better tight end in Zach Ertz than you've had at any time, so lean on him a little bit more in the middle of the field. I, I think this is a team uh, that can navigate through this, and hopefully they get him back in the postseason. And uh, the, right now, they lost that the bye position. They were the top seed in the NFC for quite some time, even going into the, the last game on Monday night against the Rams. But losing that game, falling into a first-place tie, losing out on those tiebreakers, they would be the number three seed. Where do you put the Cardinals right now in the NFC? Well, I think that was a little bit of a proving game for them on Monday night, and they fl- they fell flat, and th- and that's a little bit of a disappointment because I thought that you know people were kind of sleeping on the Cardinals a little bit. You're talking about the AF- NFC, you're talking about Green Bay, Tampa Bay, and nobody was really mentioned in the Cardinals, and their numbers told you you should have. I mean, they were third in the league in scoring differential, fourth in scoring, fourth in scoring, and and yet nobody was paying attention. Well. Here you are in the grand stage on Monday night and you didn't get it done. So I think there's doubts again about them. I still think they're a really good team. I still think that they're capable of making a run in the postseason. And we've seen over the course of the season, they can go out on the road and win. They've won the road games. And so I think that gets them ready and battle tested if they have to do that in the postseason. They have won the road games, but uh, looking at those losses, uh, they're at home. I mean, Packers at home, Panthers at home. Rams at home. Those are the three losses for the Arizona Cardinals right now. Uh, Pete, when you look at this team since the 7-0 start, and and a lot of that was without Kyler, Kyler Murray. I mean, a few of those games were. Colt McCoy came in, won that one game. But what's the biggest difference you've seen in this team from that 7-0 start 
to the last six games? Well, I think, you know, don't forget they also lost J.J. Watt. And when you watch their defense, uh, you know, that's missing in the middle of their defense. He was, a, he was a guy, he wasn't the same player he used to be, but he was still a guy who could disrupt. And, and they're lacking the, the game changer who puts his hand on the ground. You know, Chandler Jones hasn't been as effective lately, and I think that has something to do with the fact that, you know, J.J. Watt isn't there. But he can still wreck a game at times. But they don't have the down player who could totally be a disruptive force like Aaron Donald can for the Rams. He, he helps open up the other guys. So I think it's a combination of things. I, you know, not having Murray. Murray's still not back all the way. I don't think he's the same guy yet. He'll get back to that. They'll be fine on offense. It's just a matter of if they can stop the run because they give up a ton of yards on the ground. I mean, they're giving up, I think, 4.8 per rush. You can't win consistently without, uh, you know, stopping the run. And, and that's where J.J. Watt's absence comes into play. Heaviest favorite of the week, even though they are on the road, they're in Detroit taking on the Lions as a nearly two-touchdown favorite. But then they have the Colts, Cowboys, and Seahawks to finish up the regular season, and they will not have – DeAndre Hopkins for the rest of this regular season. Pete Prisco with us here on HQ. Our Jason Lock and Fora reporting that uh, the Cardinals do hope to get him back at some point in January for the postseason. Inside the NFL, if you missed last night's episode at 9.30 Eastern time, you can stream it on demand exclusively on Paramount+. Plus. Our Jason Lock and Fora reporting that the Cardinals are not going to have DeAndre Hopkins the rest of this regular season, but the team does hope that he can return in time for the postseason, and the Cardinals will be clinching a playoff spot soon. They'll clinch with a win this weekend against the Detroit Lions, but it was a hamstring in November that kept Hopkins out. This time it's that sprained knee that he suffered in the loss to the L.A. Rams on Monday. So here it is, the clinching scenarios for Arizona this week. Win and in. It's that simple. If they somehow lose to Detroit, which is really unlikely. They're the heaviest favorite of the weekend at uh, 13 and a half. That's what they're favored by. But they're also in with a San Francisco and Minnesota loss or a Minnesota and New Orleans loss or that last scenario, which is, a, which is a lot. But the bottom line is in with a win. Let's bring in Ryan Wilson, our draft analyst and contributor to the Pick 6 podcast. Ryan, um, what, what do you make of DeAndre Hopkins basically being shut down here for the rest of the regular season in hopes that he can be healthy for this playoff run the Cardinals are expecting? Yeah, Chris, on the surface, is not great news, but you sort of touched on it in the last segment with Jamie. He hasn't been the guy that we were used to seeing dominate for the Texans for so long. He is tied for third currently on the team in receptions uh, behind Kirk, behind Rondell Moore, behind A.J. Green. So you have some padding, if you will, in terms of other options for Kyler Murray. And, you know, they're third in the, in the conference as we sit here after that loss, even though they have the same record uh, as the Packers and the Bucks. But you feel like this loss is a lot more manageable than, say, the Tennessee Titans, who lost Derrick Henry earlier in the year with the hopes that he might come back uh, in the playoffs. And that appears to be uh, the track for him. So they were able to manage uh, the Arizona Cardinals Cardinals earlier this season, weeks 9, 10, and 11, were without Kyler Murray. They went 2-1 and one over that stretch with Colt McCoy. So you like to think that the options uh, behind DeAndre Hopkins and the options ahead of him in terms of the receivers with more catches this year allows that Cardinals team to, to be just fine. And by that, I mean, I think you're right. They, it would take a, a Herculean effort for the Lions to outlast the, the Cardinals this weekend, even without D-Hop. Uh, and you know what? Here's the thing, Chris. This team, for some reason, can't win at home. They're 3-3. Three and three. But they're 7-0 and on the road. Maybe best-case scenario is for them to stumble a little bit, uh, get to the fifth seed, and this is a little too much, but it, just for the sake of argument, and just play on the road. They, they, feel just, they seem to do better there. But I think at the end of the day, they'll, they'll win this weekend almost certainly. They'll get D-Hop back, fingers crossed. Uh, but as long as you have Kyler Murray there making his plays, as long as you have Rondell Moore, Christian Kirk, and A.J. Green, Zach Ertz as well, who joined the team during the middle of the season, I, I feel like they're in pretty good shape. Yeah, Ryan, maybe they end up doing what Tampa Bay did last postseason. Get in there, just win every game on the road, three games on the road to get to the Super Bowl. How about Rondell Moore doing all those mock drafts, all that research? I mean, he was in first round of your mock drafts a bunch last season, and, and he's been fun to watch at times. How do you feel they've utilized him, and what can they do to utilize him more now with Hopkins out? 
Yeah, he, here's what you do with Rondell Moore. You get the ball in his hands, and you saw a lot of him as an Iowa fan when he was at Purdue, and he has given the Cardinals what they hoped they would have had in Andy Isabella, who they took in the second round a few years ago and hasn't just worked out. Uh, the only reason Rondell Moore went in the second round is because he was 5'8", 5'7". He's small by NFL standards, uh, but he plays much bigger than that. He is he is thick. He's not uh, 5'8", 125 pounds. He's probably closer to 185, 190, maybe bigger than that. And he is so incredibly explosive, and the Cardinals have done a good job putting the ball in his hands and letting him do everything after the catch. And I think you can continue to do that, get the ball to him on quick screens, slants, quick outs, and, and let him take over from there. You have A.J. Green, who's a deep threat. You have Christian Kirk, who can attack you at all levels. And then you have, as you mentioned, James Conner, who's having the, the, a career year in the backfield. All guys who can catch the ball. Chase Evans will come back the other running back. So I think Rondell Moore, what he gives you is exactly what they'd hope from Andy Isabella, which didn't work out, but he's possibly more explosive. And by the end of the year, he may end up being one of the best rookie wide receivers after Jamar Chase. All right, that's Ryan Wilson here. DeAndre Hopkins out for the rest of the regular season, according to our Jason Lock and Fora, but the Cardinals hope to have him back for the postseason. Four games to go beginning this week against the Lions. Then they have the Colts, Cowboys, and Seahawks to wrap things up. Hopkins with eight receiving touchdowns this season. Ryan, thank you so much. Pick 6 Podcast, you can hear Ryan and the rest of the crew, Will Brinson included, download and follow the pod today. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game, the highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics? Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.